Hello and welcome to another episode of the Smarter Tech Podcast. I'm here with Dr. Tim Jackson. Dr. Tim, thanks so much for being here. Hey, Nick. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. And I have to mention, I've been working with Dr. Tim for several years. Uh, and uh, ju just a shout out to your work and to the, all the help you've provided me because uh, part of the reason the EMF guy is able to survive <laughs> and, and work and actually think straight is thanks to the work I've done with you because before uh, I would say, well, let's, I guess let's, let's dive into that because I had latent infections. I had many different layers when we started working together, but what I experienced instead of diving into the details, let me tell you about, or let people know, because you're, you're well aware to me, it was a constant brain fog. And sometimes I got it where the brain fog went away and I was like, ah, oh, yeah, this is it. And I could write and I could read and uh, concentrate for a few hours. But then the next day, oh no, it's gone. Like that feeling of being mm -hmm. sharp is gone. And I realized that it was very linked to my exposure to Wi-Fi. So for example, if I worked on a computer and Wi-Fi in front of me, sometimes after a few minutes, I start going like this and I cannot concentrate anymore. But nowadays it's way better. And it's not a reason for sure to use Wi-Fi. Everyone listening to this podcast probably understands that, but I'm going to repeat it. Even if you don't feel it, you should not expose yourself. But I don't have these symptoms anymore, which makes life easier. And I must say, even now I'm in Thailand, my diet is not optimal. Uh, I, um, I train a lot for Spartan races. So I'm, I'm really putting my body through a lot of stress on purpose and the brain fog is not really coming back. The only thing that uh, made it come back is jet lag after flying to Paris. And then I felt bad for a week, but, uh, then I went back. So, so it's really my new normal now. So, uh, can you explain what, infections or I know I had a load of different things. I still have, uh, you know, a candida issue, but um, a lot of people don't realize necessarily that um, these things, uh, normally we, we live in harmony with a certain amount of, let's say, bad bacteria. I don't want to say bad because they're part of our microbiome. Even E. coli turns out is essential from my understanding. So why is it that certain people have problems with whether it's with viruses or bacteria or, or other things like fungi like candida why is it that some people have like this let's say this over they're overwhelmed by these pathogens yeah so today it's very common for newborns you know the average newborn in the umbilical cord has between 250 and 300 known carcinogens yeah. That's horrible. You know, so yeah. we call that vertical transmission. So if it can happen with carcinogens, it can definitely happen with pathogens. Mm. And this becomes really important. This is kind of a side note, but you know, if you're trying to conceive or thinking about having a child, you definitely want to rule out any stealth pathogens because maternal immune activation can cause an attack on the baby's brain. Yeah. And you know, that can create a whole host of issues. But in general, I think, you know, most people walking around today, if you just pick, say, 100 people uh, out of random cities in the U.S., they're going to have at least two or three stealth pathogens. But, you know, the traditional model is, OK, if you have an infection, you have a fever, uh, you have malaise, you know, and you may be a little tired, may not have the energy to exercise, but it can literally be anything from brain fog to insomnia to hypersomnia, to joint pain, you know, the list is really a mile long. It, you can yeah. have a thousand people with the same pathogen, let's say Epstein-Barr, because everyone knows that, and everyone may have slightly different symptoms. And so the other thing that's worth mentioning is that most people today, or I should say the majority of people have some degree of low body temperature, uh, sort of a subclinical hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. So when your body temperature is lowered, even just a few tenths of a degree, all your biochemical reactions slow down, particularly your immune function. And so when you couple that with being exposed to Wi-Fi, which makes the pathogens feel as if they're being attacked, you know, if we can use frequency for good, like with PEMF, then it can also be used for bad, right? I mean, I'm preaching to know about the flood here, but 
Uh, those are all the things that kind of lead to chronic infections. And then you have an epidemic of vitamin A deficiency. You know, er everyone focuses on vitamin D, but I'd say vitamin A is just as important. Um, and then you have heavy metal toxicity, uh, mycotoxins, all of which suppress the immune system. So it's a multitude of factors, you know, with different percentages and different people that lead to the expression of chronic infections. And why do you say stealth pathogens? How, how are they stealth? How are they hidden? So they're not really hidden. I say stealth because to the traditional medicine, they're hidden. Mm. But, you know, if you, you can't find what you don't look for. Yeah. And so when I, people tell me, oh, well, I don't have any infections. How do you know? I mean, if you didn't test, you, you can't say. And a lot of people don't know how to interpret the, the testing as well. But I say stealth because you, you're, it's not, you know, on this end of the continuum, like you need to go to the ER with 104 yeah. degree fever, but it is interfering with your day-to-day -day functioning. And a lot of people don't even realize how much it's impacting them. I think you might have been one of these people until yeah. it's kind of gone. Exactly. And, and when I realized that uh, that first protocol we did together, um, I recall it was really for viruses. And I know that, you know, in the comments, some people will say, well, you know, the terrain, Terry, and then uh, a few people like Dr. Cowan and Dr. Kaufman are working on like, well, viruses aren't exactly. The but what can I tell you except that an antiviral protocol worked for me. So is it that it was doing something else? I don't know. But what I experienced is I recall one week in particular where I woke up on Monday and I was like, wait a minute, something is slightly different. Like I felt clearer. And that day I started having no brain fog. And that fall, um, I might have been fall of 2019 because I think we started working together at the beginning of 2019 because it wasn't mm -hmm. 2020 that was uh, too close to the pandemic. So it was a year prior. So at that fall, I really started having full days, no brain fog. And I recall eventually it got to multiple days and eventually it was weeks on end until I maybe I overdid it with uh, wine. And then the next day I'm like, oh, okay, well... <laughs> Now I'm foggy, right? So it, it's not, right. it doesn't make you invincible, but I, it was really my resilience to not going back in, in that state. Uh, so let, let's say in terms of, of pathogens, what is really brain fog on a scientific manner? Is it debris that's accumulated in the brain? Is it not enough electrical activity? What is it really? It can be all of the above or none of the above. Okay. And so I know that's a vague answer, but let's yeah. say uh, viruses, for example. So let's say the virus doesn't get into the brain or central nervous system, but it creates this inflammatory cascade throughout the body. Well, some of those inflammatory molecules that we call cytokines, it's like punching a hole in your blood brain barrier. Mm -hmm. And so then things, molecules, substances that should not have access to the central nervous system, now they do. So then those things can start to accumulate. And then that leads to activation of a particular type of cell in the brain called the microglia. And the microglia are the resident white blood cells. So we have white blood cells in our brain. They're intended to be turned on and then turned back off. So very short term. Long term, and I mean, let's just say several months, it's going to differ for you know person to person, but it can lead to cognitive decline memory issues, sleep issues, uh, and then you can get, like what you said, accumulation of toxins, you know, heavy metals, pathogens that may actually get into the nervous system. And then, you know, your brain has its own lymphatic system, the glymphatic system. And so if that's not working properly and you're getting an accumulation of toxins and then they can't drain properly, then, you know, that's going to make things exponentially worse. But I would say overall brain fog, it can also be due to decreased electrical activity in certain parts of the brain. Um, and that can be due to a number of reasons. But we know if you stimulate certain parts of the brain, say with transcranial photobiomodulation or shining light, um, red and near infrared light, that that can improve the release of certain neurotransmitters like acetylcholine and dopamine. Gotcha. And so I guess a lot of functional medicine practitioners have told me when I started this work around EMFs that 
the protocols that used to work just fine a decade ago do not anymore. Have you realized this also? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely gotten tougher. I think, you know, the more, I mean, it's never, like you said, a good idea to be exposed to non-native EMF. But if your body is less toxic with heavy metals, stealth or any kind of pathogens, mycotoxins, then the uh, non-native EMF won't have as much of a detrimental effect. Yeah. But, you know, I'm sure you've talked about this, but the creation of a molecule that makes you feel horrible called peroxynitrite, uh, EMFs do that. And so, you know, we already have things like pathogens and metals creating peroxynitrite in the body. So then you add, you know, another variable that's causing the production of that, and you have to work harder and it may require, you know, more mitigation and more supplements to get yeah. the same outcome. Yeah, and that's something I, I just sometimes I'm a little bit discouraged because I, I realize that for the average lay person that doesn't know these things, it's it's not only overwhelming, it, it, just realizing that it is that difficult to stay healthy these days that yeah. uh, we are exposed to the air and water and food, whether it's, I mean, glyphosate is in the rainwater everywhere. It's in the food everywhere. It's uh, our clothing. I mean, I don't, uh, this is what H&M, this is from a Spartan race. I don't know what's on there. Uh, and then I, I usually at, when I'm back in Montreal, I, I control my environment a little bit better. But here in Thailand, what did they wash this with? I don't know. Right. So it's getting right. So I'm exposed to a lot of environmental toxins uh, here, probably products that are banned in other countries. And it's nothing against Thailand, but uh, it might be the case. Well, it might be the case when I go to the U.S. compared to Europe. Right. So different regulations. If I ever do a trip to China, maybe I'll get exposed to even more things. I, I think maybe some products there uh, are allowed, whereas they're they're banned in other countries. But it is very, very difficult to stay healthy. And I, I think that, you know, if EMF mitigation is done well, it makes everything a little bit easier. It doesn't, it's not like a magic pill. If, if you do EMF mitigation well, you expose yourself to a bunch of chemicals, see what happens. It's bad, right? So it doesn't make you invincible. It merely kind of re reduces your stress load. So um, something else that a lot of practitioners have realized, and I, I don't know if, if maybe you have uh, coached patients through more advanced EMF mitigation. Have you seen certain patients that are electrohypersensitive yourself in, in your uh, practice? Yeah, so uh, what I've seen is people with more autonomic nervous system dysfunction. So let's kind of unpack that a little bit. So sure. basically, you have the sympathetic fight or flight and the parasympathetic divisions underneath the autonomic nervous system and the parasympathetic it's no system is ever 100 percent on and another system totally off mm -hmm. but you want to be more parasympathetic most of the time you know if you're in the middle of a spartan race you're going to be more sympathetic <laughs> but then after the race you you know you want to go back to being parasympathetic yeah all of our healing takes place in a parasympathetic state so if you're spending most of your time in a sympathetic state you can't detoxify so even if you might be taking the right supplements, but you won't get the full benefit, you know, the full spectrum of benefits. And so, you know, what I've seen is that, uh, you know, people have to work much harder and uh, it's definitely can take longer. And uh, people are more sensitive in general, I think, because of the overall toxin load. But then, you know, going back to the nervous system dysfunction, any a lot of times people say i'm not stressed well you can have 10 million dollars in the bank and never have to work and spend your days on the beach but you can have a lot of internal stressors right like yeah. viruses metals mold and so those any inflammatory stressor will put you in a fight or flight state so you're running from a tiger um you know that's how we evolved and so the more uh unbalanced or imbalanced the autonomic nervous system is the more sensitive from what I've seen people are to EMFs. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and it's kind of, uh, I guess what came first, is it the chicken or the egg? Sometimes it's the EMFs make you more stress and the stress makes you more sensitive to EMFs kind of thing. Uh, 
And it's true that um, for me, it was starting to work on these practices. I, I did uh, neurofeedback that helped a lot, kind of calm my brain down. Uh, it completely changed, and I have to to mention it because I, I did also write to you about about these these things. I did that at the uh, uh, Montreal Institute of Neurology, if I recall correctly. Sorry, I'm, if I get, I'm I'm gonna put it in the show notes in case someone is in Montreal because it's a very good place. I had to pay out of pocket, you know, and when I went there. <laughs> It's it's almost funny, you know, they took a brain scan and they took a questionnaire and they're like, Nick, why are you here? In the sense that I'm a healthy young folk where everyone coming into the door at neurofeedback or for different, their Alzheimer's, the, uh, dementia are trying to avoid it or, or borderline, uh, TBI, of course, so people that had the major tra- head trauma or, or even minor, but, uh, you know, for me, if they took my brain scans and they said, well, of course, you're, you're a few deviations away from the optimal in th- several spots. And when I started working with neurofeedback, I didn't really feel as, as much like rushed uh, to prepare dinner really subtle things like, okay, I have to do din like, oh, dinner is not ready. Nothing is. And like, I'm sweating bullets and, and like, but why am I really putting myself in that state is it was just, my brain was like, look, this is important. It needs dinner needs to be ready at five fifty, or else the, the kiddo won't be in bed in time. But, but you know, I, I kind of over stressed over these things. Now I can say, oh yeah, it's true. It's a bit late, but I feel way calmer on a regular basis. So I can only imagine what are the repercussions of that on my nervous system in the long term, because every, right. everything that happens to me on a regular basis is a little bit, you know, it's 20% less, um, daunting or really having this doom doomsday feeling about certain things even bad news you know if i have bad news or something isn't right with the business i don't get this feeling of oh getting riled up or angry or these kind of things so for me neural feedback and also uh something that i i can mention because it's a very cheap tool that i think a lot of people with nervous system problems might might get benefits from the tens unit uh that i've been using twice a day it's been years now i'm just using it and i you know i i don't even know if it's working anymore or anything but i can tell you that i'm calm <laughs> so and things yeah. are working fine so that's uh i don't recall the the exact name of the unit but tens unit you know it's just tens uh, pro 7000 tens pro 7000 so i'm gonna put it in the show notes uh and, and you had you have me put it on the uh on the on the ear there and and the lobe so the i guess the the tragus, right? Tragus, uh, uh-huh. Tragus and the lobe, and it just calms you down 30 minutes a day, twice a, uh, twice a day. So it's, and again, I mean, some people can experiment with that, but something else, um, and, and why I wanted to have you on, I think it's, it would be something just just um, to address. I Before meeting you, <laughs> I purchased supplements. I self-navigated on a lot of things and I had some successes and some things didn't work, but it was really guesswork. And um, even with all my knowledge, years and years of study, talking to scientists, studying nutrition, and I mean, I'm not an academic, but I I, still, I I spent a lot of time on this. Even Mm -hmm. with all this knowledge, I cannot really pinpoint what is causing brain fog, what is causing what. And just within this conversation alone, you've probably talked about 25 different things we need to think about when it comes to, okay, exposure to X, Y, Z and factors. And I know when we review labs together, I'm, I'm always like, oh my God, there is so much stuff to know about certain labs. So um, I guess it's just, I, I don't even know if there is a question in there, but I, I can just say that self-navigating only will get you so far having someone that is a practitioner kind of guide you through it and actually taking labs is super useful um i would just encourage everyone that is self-navigating to maybe um let's say start spending 50 percent less on supplements start saving money and eventually hire someone it's really right. like, I, I wish I would have done it sooner. Are you seeing a lot of people that have been self-navigating or kind of wasting money away for years? Yeah, I had someone, this was probably three years ago, and she's a PhD level scientist. And 
she was spending right at two grand a month just on supplements. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, I don't know how long it'll take, but I can probably get you down to six or seven most at the most. And she's like, oh, no, no, no you can't take away my supplements. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. she got kind of defensive. Uh, so I think people kind of get attached. But um, and some people will say, well, how long do I need to take this? And for things like magnesium, you know, I asked them, when did you brush your teeth this morning? Are you going to take the rest of the year off? Well, no. OK, then it's the same. <laughs> yeah, magnesium. magnesium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how many days or how long do I have to get sunlight? So you take your last breath. <laughs> I, that's just the way it is. Like, I, I didn't make the rules. I love just it. How the body works. Yeah. And so, you know, you can do a lot by and I, I will say this. When I first started practicing, I was much heavier on supplements and less heavy on the environment. Now it's the other way around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you stress the importance of mold, for example. That's something we've been uh, working on together. And when I come back in Montreal, I guess we're going to talk about it. I'm going to have to make changes. And I did interview uh, Michael Rubino a few episodes ago as as we were recording this, uh, who's a mold expert. And he told me about the, the ups and downs or let's say the... The, the the reality with mold mitigation and how it's it's not always done the re the right way or tested the right way and that's that's another thing um so have you personally seen i guess some people in environmental medicine tell their patients to go camping for example to get them out of the environment is that something you're using like testing like this in certain situations to verify if the home is a problem uh, whether it's emfs or mold or maybe the air quality or radon or something like that yeah usually i mean i'll have people do those tests for their home but i'll also recommend that they spend you know a weekend away or a week away if possible yeah and you know it's hard to decipher if okay they were just super stressed at their career for sure or are they away from the mold um the hardest part to navigate i would say you know based on my experience is not the home but the workplace because oh, if you yeah. don't own the business and you know you go to the owner you know they just see it as an expense Yeah. But if you look at it correctly, you know, okay, it's causing brain fog and probably people who don't even realize it. So if you have 50 employees, you know, that's a lot of lost money, you know, yeah. productivity. And yeah. so um, I think getting out in nature is always a good thing. The negative ions, the grounding, the earthing, um, the being away from, I mean, you're never away from pollution, but being exposed to less pollution Yeah. less non-native emf i think that can uh you know do a great deal in helping someone determine you know if their home or business is a problem yeah that's that's an important fact and unfortunately i don't know if we're there yet as far as employers kind of understanding that the the bad air in the building and the lack of sunshine and just those cubicles you know everyone is feeling depressed here and if we change that the company is going to make more money like right this is true this is what's ha like if people are happier and just, they don't get that brain fog but and if you let them go on the smoke break but instead of smoking they get sunshine mm -hmm. right that's the jack cruz uh idea which i think is brilliant Uh, just get your circuit and reset. And I, I try to do that even when I work in coffee shops that are well lit with, with natural sunshine. Because again, if you're outside, you're getting the full spectrum. If you're inside, you do get that uh, that UV or, or a large fraction of the spectrum that uh, is blocked by uh, windows. So, um, Absolutely. yeah, I, is, there, is there, do you have any other anecdotes about things that you've been trying to lower EMF sensitivity that would be relevant because you, I know you have a lot of clinical experience. So even if there's no study and stuff like that, uh, I don't mind for it. If you tried something and you're like, oh yeah, this is something that's underrated. Have you, have you seen anything really, really work? One thing that I don't know if it worked because it reduced EMF sensitivity or if it helped silence retroviruses um so retroviruses they can you know just another type of virus just slightly different and can make you feel horrible fulvic acid high dose fulvic okay. acid especially the liquid um, on an empty stomach twice a day 
you know, I know that uh, Dr. Klinghart says it silences retroviruses. And so, you know, mm -hmm. one of the, you know, downfalls of EMFs is it's activating retroviruses. Yeah. So yeah. if anything, you know, it's helping on that regard, but it also helps nutrients get into your cells and toxins get out. And a lot of times when the cell membrane potential, um, which should be minus 70 to minus 90 millivolts, when that's altered, then your ion channels and the way nutrients get in and toxins get out, that's also altered. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's, a, that's an important part. And I, I know Dr. Klinghar, for some people that have been following my work, uh, I've, I've been, um, I even did a part of my course, Electrosmog RX, a few years ago. Uh, it was launched in 2000. Uh, 18 with Dr. Klinghart and he has he has a different take on EMFs and and many things than many people I know in functional medicine not everyone agrees with the guy but he's getting results for certain people that that uh, you know are otherwise on their deathbed so that's something as far as I, I can also share a few a few thoughts from uh, Dr. Stephanie McCarter from the uh, from the um, Environmental Center Dallas uh, which, which I think she's someone that works also with environmental toxicity and she really stressed the importance of detoxification and she said, again, just a comment to give hope to some people. I know a lot of people in my community or uh, people that share my videos are electro hypersensitive and I, I feel like a lot of them are part of this cultural thinking, I think, in the movement that uh, it is permanent. It is a permanent condition. Right. What I can say is this, uh, there's no guarantee that you can lower sensitivity because maybe your body doesn't simply doesn't respond, but I've seen it happen. Uh, and Dr. Stephanie McCarter, you know, she, she sees these patients day in, day out. She says, yes, it, it can be dramatically lowered in some cases, completely cured. And I can use right. that word, I guess, because I'm not a doctor, but. I mean, oh, but, uh, you know, anyway, mo uh, most uh, conventional doctors would say electro hypersensitivity doesn't even exist. So I guess I can say it can be cured since it's not a, a real thing. Yeah, but for I mean, those, nothing yeah. exists until the insurance pays for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, just a comment to say that it can be cured. So it's good that you're, you're, you've seen certain things uh, lower it. But the thing is, it's not simple to lower sensitivity. So uh, I would say... Would you agree that, let's say, lowering EMF sensitivity is like saying lowering brain fog? You don't, there's like, you, you're not working on one thing that's going to lower sensitivity. It's not the goal. The goal is to fix certain imbalances. And then as a, as a happy consequence, the brain fog goes away. But you're never sure when it goes away, right? Because he, right. it's like, it's a multi-systemic approach. So I, I think some people are, are thinking about, certain ailments still in that very linear way where they say, oh, well, my, what is causing my sensitivity? Well, it might be like 7,000 different factors in your body that are off balance. But then the question is, once you start moving systems, eventually maybe your sensitivity decreases. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 complicated. Um, may, maybe once I, because I have you on the line, I, I know a lot of people talk about detoxification. Uh, that's an understatement, you know, uh, in, in the last 10 years, 13 years writing online, detox, detox this, detox juice. I, what do you consider a safe approach for people listening to this that want to do regular detoxification, but don't have access to the more advanced things with a practitioner. I do recommend a practitioner, but the reality is, let's say if they want to do the, like what is really something that detoxifies us? Is it sauna? Is it certain supplements that you can take by yourself? Is it regular sweating? What works with detox? I would, the sauna definitely works. And it used to be the case that, you know, unless you had $8,000 to spend on a sauna, you couldn't get a quality one. Yeah. Well, that's no longer true. I have a, and I'll just say the brand, Therasage. It's sure. a full spectrum bar, mm -hmm. mid, and near infrared, which also has red light therapy panels. And Good. so those different wavelengths can penetrate different depths in your cells and your fat tissue. And so you're going to mobilize different toxins. So that's a good way. Um, you can never go wrong. And you, I mean, the return on investment is exponential. Yeah. Um, you know, to give a financial analogy. 
but I would say the sauna, making sure your bowels are moving. I like to say minimum twice a day. Um, but you know, if you're not pooping, but once or twice a week, I would say aim for once a day first and then work on twice a day. And you can do that by body weight squats. That helps to get the, any sort of physical activity helps the bowels get moving. But spot squats in particular help to sort of push the fecal matter up the ascending colon. Another thing uh, that's really important and it creates sort of these pathogen reservoirs, um, what Dr. Christine Schaffner calls pathogen reservoirs, and that's the lymphatic system congestion. And so um, any sort of, you know, if you have a gym that has a vibration plate, um, you know, if you're not used to detoxifying, I would start out with as little as two minutes and gradually, you know, as tolerated, work up to 10 minutes a day um, because our lymphatic system requires muscular contractions to get the lymphatic fluid moving. And so if we're on the vibration plate, you know, and it's moving three dimensionally, we're sort of getting that congestion um, decongested. And that's important because your lymphatic system is like the garbage disposal system. And so if your garbage disposal is clogged, you aren't gonna go add more stuff on top of it every day. And so unclogging the lymphatic system, getting the bowels moving, and the TENS unit that you mentioned can also help with that. I typically do an hour twice a day and I know it's working, um, not to be gross, because I have a bowel movement pretty much every time after I use it. Mm. And so that means I, you know, I'm more parasympathetic, more rest and digest. And so I think getting the lymphatic system moving, getting your body moving, and a sauna are the three top ways, you know, before people move into more advanced things. Yeah. And when I see people emailing me saying, oh, I've got the. Uh... I was trying chelation and this and that. I'm like, oh my God. Well, I used to talk about these things and maybe I was a little bit, not reckless, but you know, I was just curious about these things and talking about it on the newsletter. But quickly I realized talking to doctors, talking to functional medicine practitioners, they said, Nick, look, uh, for some people it can be very dangerous and i said oh why is it exactly well the you know stirring up metals or getting metals out of bones out of fat tissue and into the circulation but you know when i realized that that's not something we worked on together but uh, uh what is it there's um there's this uh, detoxific uh, detoxification uh med that i tried for around it's uh the uh, is it the not the MPS. It, what is it? I don't recall. I, t I told you about it, but a DMSA, DMSA. So <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it because sometimes I have these stories and I think it will be benefit to everyone. I was taking DMSA and, um, I started very slow as recommended by, uh, and, it, and his doctor, Nick Jensen from, um, BC who, um, was able to get me to DMSA. So real prescription look, and it, it works. It's something that can be very effective. Was my body ready for it? I don't know. Well, you'll see. Uh, I was in the entrance of my building in Montreal, ready to go to a coffee shop and I had my bag and my laptop. And at one, one point I, I had totally forgot that I was on DMSA, you know, it was just okay. Adding a pill to my, my morning supplements or something. So all of a sudden I feel that there's something wrong and a sort of feeling where I'm a bit confused, like as if you just had a thought and then you forgot it, but it keeps doing that. And I was very confused and I stayed there for a while and I started getting anxious, uh, not a full on blown, um, f full out panic attack, nothing like that, but just, I was unable to cross that door and get out of the building for 20 minutes and that's a very disconcerting because i never had this level of you know confusion in my life or that i can recall or maybe well of course on alcohol when I, when i was a student but yeah but let's say just sober and and i was you know i got to the coffee shop and i was a bit in shock a bit feeling like okay what happened and then i remembered oh my god i'm on this detoxification and something happened where i'm just overwhelmed obviously it was it was the only thing i ever changed and 
I wrote to Dr. Nick and he said, well, you know, <laughs> maybe the dosage, it was a bit too much. And it's nothing to play with. When I had that, I really back down and after that it was fine and uh, I did see a, a bit of benefits uh, doing around uh, and maybe I still have a bottle I think back in Montreal so maybe, maybe I'll, I'll go through that when the time is right and with your counsel but the reality is it can I don't know if it can damage you but imagine what it could have done if I was driving my car dangerous yeah. right so, so yeah I recommend anyone who's going to do chelation to do sort of a pre-tox protocol, pre-toxification. So prep the kidneys, prep the liver, and support them while you're doing chelation. And you had already done some level of that, yeah. either knowingly yeah. or unknowingly. So that's probably why you know you had some success with it. Whereas people, you know, if you're having two bowel movements a week and you know you're dehydrated and you go in and get IV chelation, yeah. I have a colleague, um, I mean, this was 20 years ago, he said he was bridging from conventional allopathic medicine to functional medicine. He went and got chelation. He had to be hospitalized in the psych hospital. Oh, my God. Because he had so much mercury and it was redistributed throughout his body. Well, and, he, you know, the what? what is it? The I, I don't recall the name in English, like the hat maker disease, right? So, The, oh, Mad Hatter's disease? Mad Hatter's disease, right? It was with heavy metals. So, I mean, you, it can screw up your with your brain. I think some people could become violent without their, like, not willing to do anything, but become very angry or very irritated. And then up, up that echelon is being violent or just, I mean, you, I don't know, you, you, you could drive a bulldozer and then you become confused and you start destroying everything. Who knows? It can be a big hazard. So uh, hopefully people, it is just to share, my anecdote was pretty, you know, pretty mild, but it could have been worse. I could have been yeah. with my child and for 20 minutes I cannot take care of him. I don't know. But for me, as a, I mean, uh, just I'm, uh, I'm 35. I think the anecdote happened. I was 33. So I don't expect to be confused in a hallway for 20 minutes, not being able to open the door. Right. So that's something that made me more prudent towards detoxification and say, okay, well, you know, we are exposed to a lot of toxins and what you recommended is gentle detoxification. But if you do the advanced things where you want to detoxify the brain, well, beware, just be respectful that it, it, it's something where you don't necessarily have the expertise yourself. And even if you do, you should probably work it with a colleague because you can be biased and, and say, oh no, yeah, I can handle that dose just fine and then get sick, right? So please, please just be respectful of that. Uh, is, is there anything else you wanted to mention in that discussion? I know we went in different direction, but I feel like it's super useful because overall it's a discussion about the functional medicine approach and what you should do by yourself and also what you should do with the practitioner and how it ties into uh, EMF sensitivity. Is there anything we missed in that discussion? No, I would just encourage people to pursue things. Most of the things they do should be sustainable. So, you know, these harsh mm. juice cleanses, especially for someone who hasn't detoxified before, you know, they're eating fast food and they just do a harsh juice cleanse. You know, your body's dumping toxins because a lot of toxins are fat soluble. So you start dropping body fat, you're going to release toxins into the bloodstream, your organs aren't prepared. So if you do it gently, make it sustainable because we're never going to stop being exposed to toxins. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to do something harsh and then stop. Uh, so do something sustainable and maintain it. Yeah, that's a good, that's a very good point. And uh, how can people uh, work with you, find you, uh, please name your websites, uh, your services, if, if you still take new, on new clients, for example? Yeah, so my website is healyourbody.org. Uh, they can contact me there. At the top, there's a tab that says apply to work with Dr. Tim. And so they can fill that out and I get an email. Uh, I am accepting new clients, uh, and my podcast, which I hope to have you on, is the Boss Body Podcast that just launched at the end of August. Well, I think we're on episode 11 now. Shameless plug. 
Uh, no, not shameless at all. I invite you to. Well, everyone, go check that podcast. And um, I'm, you know, Dr. Tim. I I know that um, how I found you is is really that I I think you're you're one of the let's say you're you're not among like the extremely well known big list big like big players in functional medicine with huge businesses, but you're kind of a behind the scenes guy that is extremely knowledgeable on, on all these things. So I, I can I can really vouch for what you've been able to do and the 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 times where things didn't work with you and <laughs> is when I don't listen to you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I have I have to tell it. You know, the MSA I just oh I'll try this and you know, so just having a coach that um, knows knows all these things inside and out, you understand EMFs, you understand also mold, infections, and if I tell you, oh, mast cell activation, this and that, you're, you're like, oh, yes, yes, you know all these things and you're always studying, so you're very up to date on um, what works and, and that's that's not the case with everyone. Some people have their specialty, but I think what I found with you is uh, you're someone that is non-dogmatic and you're not a- attached to or, or wedded to one approach. Like you're not, okay, well, uh, the only thing you should ever do is go gluten-free. <laughs> you're not like right. the, the, the this or that guy. You're, okay, uh, we're gonna find what works and then next year, I might tell, I might talk to you, and you might say, you know what, the approach has evolved a little bit because you're always learning. And that's how, for me, it's a litmus test for people that uh, are on the cutting edge, really. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate uh, everything you do. Um, well, for me, and then for for your clients and for the public. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that compliment. That's a huge compliment. I mean, I'm probably. You know, people always want you to pick a niche, you know, pick one thing, but, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's really hard to do because your body, I mean, yeah, in some cases it, it's just mold, but that's, I mean, maybe 1% of yeah, cases. Yeah, exactly. And so that's why I think you have to be well-versed. Yeah. Well, uh, to be ho- really holistic, right? Really right. holistic doesn't mean that uh, everyone you see has a mold problem. It means, well, maybe they have a mold problem, but what else is there? <laughs> and right. if you miss EMFs, you're missing something. If you miss, if you if you go too deep into environmental medicine and you forget that nutraceuticals or just basic vitamins and minerals are important, then you're kind of getting lost also. So, you yeah. know, everything matters. That's the thing. Everything impacts us, everything matters, and we have to, to have this systems approach um, to, for it to really work. So, uh, awesome. So Dr. Tim Jackson, heal your And we're going to have all the show notes underneath. Uh, thank you so much. It's been a, a very well-versed, uh, conversation into functional medicine, EMF sensitivity and what works currently. So people get a sauna. That's something I've been advocating for a while, but, uh, I hope I think when I'm go, going to back to Montreal, I'm going to get one of those uh, kind of sleeping bag format sauna. I'll email you about it. There's a new brand that just came out or that's coming out in the next two months. Uh, zero EMF sauna, but uh, these kind of a sleeping bag format that are okay. very low key and easy to just roll up and put under a bed, you know. So for some people with limited space, it, it might be very good for uh, daily detox. All right. Well, yeah, I'd everyone, love to check it out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so uh, I know you want to stay on the cutting edge, right? So I'm going to I'm gonna send you a link. So awesome, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, please go visit uh, Dr. Jackson. Check out his podcast. And until then, uh, well, stay healthy. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.